Hey, it's Steve. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the Celestron C90 Maxitov Cassegrain. So the Celestron C90 has been a popular telescope for quite a while. There's, it's certainly a popular, you know, grab-and-go, travel, high-powered type of telescope that can be used for spotting, birding. Uh, you know, it is good for astronomy uses as well, and so that's really what I'm going to talk about here. But it kind of depends what you're wanting to do with it and what your main purpose for the scope is. This is a 90 millimeter scope with a very long focal length, uh, about 1250 millimeters. So this will do really well on the moon, on planets. You can get nice views of Jupiter, you know, Mars, Saturn. Uh, here's a picture of some images I took with this telescope uh, earlier this year back in June. So you can get pretty nice images with it, certainly, of brighter objects in the night sky. But you only can get about a 1.2 degree field of view out of this telescope, which is about what you can get out of a C8 as well, as a maximum field of view, without using a reducer or anything. And so, so it can be hard to find objects. Also, since it does not transmit as much light as a refractor of the same size would, the images are going to be dimmer than what you would get out of a similar size refractor. So really you're looking at the light transmission of something probably closer to an 80 millimeter refractor. Uh, you have a center spot which blocks some light. You have the meniscus lens in the front. You have you know two sets of mirrors plus your diagonal and everything. And so you are losing some amount of light because of that. Generally speaking, this will not perform as well as say an 80 millimeter apochromatic telescope would, you know, a higher end telescope of a slightly smaller size, but it will perform, you know, probably better than an acromat would at that size. And really it's gonna do well on planets again, it's gonna do well on the moon, you know, brighter deep sky objects, the Orion Nebula will do fine on, but dimmer objects you're gonna have a little bit harder time with this, it's not gonna perform maybe quite as what you might expect for a 90 millimeter telescope. And so that is a limitation. Uh, the advantages of this scope are that it's very small, very portable, very lightweight. It's quite rugged. You can throw this in a backpack. It's not going to get damaged very easily. Uh, you, you know, it's just really a robust telescope. Now this is a low price as well. It only costs about $230, but the really big caveat there is you only get a 60 degree diagonal. So you have to buy a 90 degree diagonal probably if you want to do astronomy with it, because otherwise you're going to be, you know, upside down trying to, you know, view through it above about 45 degrees. The bigger thing though is that the, you know, you don't have a tripod with it, so you're going to have to buy a mount or a tripod for it, but that's true for any telescope as well. Uh, that doesn't come with one, so but you could be adding a couple hundred dollars extra for that. And also it comes with this 8 by 21 millimeter finder, and this is pretty much useless. Uh, you have to have your eye directly up against it. I cannot actually see through this with my glasses because if the eye relief is very short on this, and so it's, it's just not usable. You really can't use this very effectively. I have a red dot finder that I use for it. It works much better. Um, you could use this as like a little monocular if you wanted to or something. Um, and keep it, but you know that's going to be an upgrade as well. So that's twenty bucks there. You know another, you know some amount for the diagonal amount. So if you don't have any other accessories, this is kind of a steep entry price. Like re really, you're going to be spending you know double what this telescope costs to fully use it because you need all those other accessories. So when you start looking at a five hundred dollar price tag for you know when you include the diagonal, an extra eyepiece or two, the mount, you know the finder, you could be buying a really nice Dobsonian. That's going to show you a lot more, but obviously you don't have a travel aspect of it. Um, but you could also, at that point, be looking in some other telescopes that you can travel with that might be you know, a better option as well. So that's kind of the problem with this telescope is that it's a nice complementary scope for something that you might already have if you already have you know, those accessories because you have a different telescope. But if you're buying this as your first telescope, it's probably not your best option uh, and you're probably better served by you know, buying something else. So, that's the recommendation. If you don't have a telescope already, this shouldn't be your first telescope, um, unless you're primarily buying it for, you know, birding or for, you know, taking to the, you know, a shooting range or something like that, where you need to, you, you, you have like a use for it besides just astronomy, then in that case, it can be a good telescope to buy, you know, but for just astronomy, probably not your best first scope, but if you have another telescope, you want something small, something that's very lightweight and you can travel with, this can be a really nice option need to complement what you already have. So I recommend it with reservations depending on what your situation is. A lot of people might be better off getting like an 80 millimeter refractor that's of high quality if they can afford you know the extra amount for that and that can be a really nice travel scope and do really well on planets as well and, and do better than this probably on average. But again 230 bucks on sale usually for you know 190, 180 sometimes and so if you get it on sale it's really hard to beat the views you can get out of a scope 
for that price. But again, keep in mind, if you don't already have the telescope mount and accessories, you're gonna have to buy those and spend a lot of extra money. So anyway, that's a quick review of the Celestron C90. I have a blog post on the website with a lot more detail and more specifications and all that kind of thing you can check out as well. I'll have a link to that in the description below. But certainly for a small portable telescope, an option to consider. Anyway, that's all for now and thanks for watching.